Hi, welcome to question four of the 2022 paper two in the Leave Insert order level maths. As always, if you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and that email address should be in the description below. So um, just moving in here to question four, it looks like statistics, so let's read through it. A group of students sat an exam. Each student was given a grade. The following table shows how many students got each grade. So we see here eight students got a distinction, 12 got a high merit, 39 got a merit, and 13 got achieved. Now, even before I do anything, if I want to try to pick up an attempt, they don't tell me how many students there are. So I'm just going to add all them together. Okay. Now, I should know the answer to this. It's probably on the next page. Uh, 72 students. I'm cheating. I should use my calculator. Now, um, then I suppose we should read the question. Complete the pie chart. Now, a pie chart has it's a full circle, and a full circle has 360 degrees. So I'm writing it down to try to help myself. Um, so complete the pie chart below to show this information. Label each sector clearly. Now, I know with Leave Insert, if they give you an instruction and you don't follow it, it can you mean a deduction in marks. So just make sure you read the question before well and afterwards, just to make sure you haven't missed uh, a requirement. It also says show your calculations. The sector for distinction is already given. It has an angle of 40. Okay. Now the question is, how did they get that angle of 40? And, and I'll show you here that they're basically saying if there's 72 students, the fraction of that circle represented by 40 is 8 over 72. Now I can show that calculation, I can prove it. If I multiply that fraction of the full amount by 360, that will tell me how many degrees that equates to. So let me just bring across my calculator. So the fraction there, I was just messing with my calculator. Apologies, I was practicing how to do standard deviation uh, on this particular model of the calculator. So the fraction there is eight over 72. And I'm gonna multiply that by 360. If I was trying to find percentage, I'm multiply by 100. But I'm trying to find how much of a circle that is, and that gives me the 40. Okay, so I was going to write that down there, uh, 40 degrees. So I need to recreate that for the other calculations. So 12 over 72 times 360. I'll have to do the same thing again for 39 out of the 72 by 360. And then the last one there of 13. So I've done it out here, okay, just for speed, it's, and my writing is terrible. So that's the four different angles that will make up the full circle. The 40 was already there, and at this stage I'm going to use my protractor, and it's impossible, to, or I don't have the wherewithal, to do that on the, in a digital way. But if you lay your protractor with the center of it here, and just measure 60 degrees from that line there, and then the 195, and then whatever, whatever's left is the 13 out of the 72. Make sure you put the degrees in and the angle, because they did say to label each sector clearly. I've put in then the high merit distinction achieved and merit. I was just checking the marking scheme there, and I see that any work of merit, so even adding the number of students together, got you the low partial, which is the four. Okay, And to get the mid, if you got any angle um, correctly labeled to the pie charts, if you got the, the 60, you got up to the mid partial. Okay, which is it's a good chunk of marks. It deducted one just one credit for 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 labels missing. Okay, which isn't terrible in the scheme of things, but still every mark counts. So the next question, our next part here, part B says a large group of people took a reading test. The scores were normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 20. So they're given a diagram here with the middle of it. Now it looks they do say that so it's a normal distribution. Okay, so it's symmetrical about both sides. And the statistics were always, I won't say hoping, but if the data can be described using a normal distribution, then lots of different rules of statistics can apply. If it doesn't follow a normal distribution, I suppose the, the type of statistical tools that can be used are more limited. Um, it says here the standard deviation is 20. So we know that one standard deviation away is plus or minus 20. So if that's 100, that's 120. A two standard deviations away would be 140, and three would be what 160. And then going below, standard deviation below would be 80, 
then 60, and then 40. Now it says use the empirical rule to answer parts B1 and B2. Now I know from the marking scheme that part one, B1 and B2 are marked together, so the, the, to the total of them are worth the, the 10 marks. And it says what percentage of people had scores between 80 and 120? Okay, so the empirical rule, I'm actually gonna to go to the answer here because it's clearer. The empirical rule states in a normal distribution, if you're within one standard deviation of the mean, that covers roughly, whatever, 68% of the people. If you're within two standard deviations of the mean, that represents 95%, and then three standard deviations is, is an even higher amount. So that's what I've said here. The scores 80 and 120 are within one standard deviation from the mean. The empirical rule indicates that in a normal distribution, that would cover 68% of the population. So you have to have a good understanding of the empirical rule to be able to get full marks. Now, part B, part two there, okay, so it says the top 2.5% of scores were given a grade of exceptional. What was the least score that was needed to get this grade? Okay, so the answer here kind of speaks for itself, but I'll read through it. Um, within two standard deviations of the mean is the 95% of the data, okay? So the top 2.5% of scores should be within that two standard deviations of the mean. So if 100 is the mean, one standard deviation is 20, two standard deviations is another 20, so that gives you 140, okay? So 140 is the least grade that would be needed to get the score of exceptional. Now, I find those questions tricky, because uh, you know not, not, once you get practice at them, they're, they're much easier, but they can be very off-putting um, when you see words like the empirical rule. In a sense, if you can BS, if you're struggling with this, and I know that like anything relevant on the diagram would have hopefully gotten a mark. And if you kind of went, why are the markings here? And gone, look, 100, and add on 20? Sure, I'll, I'll go for it. If you'd written that 120 there, or the 80 for that matter, you would have gotten the low partial of three. And the question that you're struggling with, you know what, that's, that's better than nothing, okay? So question four, part C, and this is why I was practicing the standard deviation. It says the scores of six people on this test were as follows. Okay, so we have them there. It says find the range and the standard deviation of these numbers and give that standard deviation correct to one decimal place. So the range is fairly handy. Um, it's the biggest number, take away the smallest. So I think the biggest is there. So it's 113, and you're taking away the smallest, which looks to me to be 82. And you're going to get whatever that is. Okay, so 18, 28, and 3 is 25. Well, I'll just check the answer. No, 13, take away 82 is 31. My bad. Okay, 31. That was very bad. I shouldn't have actually scribbled it out. I should have put a line through it. Um, so that if it was right, um, I would have got the marks for that. But that's the range. Now, the mean uh, would be the sum, the sum of the data. So I don't know why that... It's too far over on my writing tablet. Um, let's get rid of that, it's not confusing. And is the sum of the data divided by the number of data points? Okay. Now, if you weren't sure here what standard deviation was, but really standard deviation is um, this symbol here, mu, okay, is equal to the square root of the sum of the data take away the mean to be squared, all divided by the number of data points. Now that calculation is standard deviation. You see here, you need the mean. So the mean is given by this. Now, if you want to find the mean, all you have to do is add all your data, okay, and divide by the number of data points. They don't have to be in order. They only need to be in order for the median or potentially the mode, okay and divide that by just six pieces of data. Now that will give you this calculation here, and that would be enough for like the marks, for lack of a better word. Um, if you're gonna do it by hand, there's a convoluted way of doing it, um, but you kind of should or is expected that you would know how to use the calculator, okay? Let me just make this bigger on the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to move this in a second. And this Casio, now it's a Casio um, FX82 um, ES, but if you Google or put in YouTube, 
the make of your calculator and maybe standard deviation. It will show you how to use it. But on this particular one, and if you don't have this calculator, I'd suggest moving on. But uh, Casio, so stat, so I will need to move it. Okay. And then I'm looking for one variable. I'm going to input the variables. And they are 104 and 82 and 94 and 113 and 98 and 105. Okay, now I've just literally learned how to do this from another person's video. If I press the AC button, it gets stored. And then I want to press the shift button, the stat button. Okay, and now I've actually done that wrong. So I just, the way this calculator is working. And I'm going to look here for four, okay, which is the variance. And then the standard deviation is four. Nope. I should, I should have pressed the three there, and I got the 9.758. Now, if I flick to the answer here, okay, um, that's the formula for mean. That's the formula for standard deviation of a, of a, a small piece of data. Um, then I've got the standard deviation here to three decimal places. If I round that, I round it to one. The five is what matters. The number prior to it rounds up by one to give 9.8. Now, this question only was given five marks in the final marking scheme, and it's it's a tricky question, you know. If you don't know how to do standard deviation, you're going to struggle on that question. But the marks for the range would have got the high partial. Okay, so if you'd found the range, you would have got the three. Now, if you lose out on the other two because you don't do you don't know how to do standard deviation in the calculator, or you don't know the formula, well then you know it's not the end of the world. The focus on standard deviation is more around understanding that the that Meet the mean of a normal distribution, okay. Now, excuse my bad drawn, is the center. That's supposed to be a straight line. So, that standard deviation would be whatever. Now, if you had a different set of data that was like maybe more like that, it's going to have a smaller standard deviation. And the example I often use is um, when I like I lived in Japan for a while, I noticed one night that like a New Year's Eve celebration that like everybody was around a similar height. Okay, I was like lost from friends and I thought I'd be able to find them in the throngs of people. And I was looking around going, I'm not actually all that tall, but um I could see other heads of my mates who were like six foot two, three, whatever. Um and I'd be the the the, the closest five ten, five eleven. So I could see them. I know it's like a lot of people, Japanese people weren't much different in height. Okay. Whereas if I imagine then if I was in um I'm Irish. In an Irish situation, you get lots of tall people, lots of short people. It just it seems more varied. The variance is bigger in terms of heights. Now, I don't actually have any data to back that up. It's purely anecdotal observation of me um, at a New Year's Eve like fireworks display. But it, it's as good an illustration as any. Um, that there, the the deviation is just a measure of how much the data deviates from the middle. Okay, so the smaller the deviation the smaller that difference is from the middle. That's really all standard deviation is. And a statistician can look at that number and go, and the mean, and mode, and median, and understand what the data is trying to say, as opposed to just looking at large lists of numbers, which the human brain can't handle, okay? So I think that's the end of question four. See you on question five. If you want a copy of the set of notes I'm working on, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. Thank you.